We're Evan and Melanie, and we've been living in our van for over two years. Traveling full time around the western half of North America, including Alaska. But if you watched our last two episodes, you'd think we're brand new to this after seeing us spend 24 hours digging our van out of sand on our very first day in Baja. Um, so we're very stuck. We're happy to report that we're out of the sand and continuing on our journey to Baja, California, Sur. The journey still has some bumps in the road, but what's Baja without a couple mishaps? Hot mic. We've moved quickly through these first few days in Mexico. You know, aside from spending too much time digging, we've spent our days scoping out points of interest along the northern half of Baja California Sur. A little research to figure out where we want to slow down and spend more time when we drive north again. With summer heat approaching, we'd like to make it far south before the cooler night temperatures are gone. That said, our plans are never set in stone, and when we hit the charming town of Mulahe with the perfect beachside camp spot, it was hard not to sit and stay a while. The question was, could I get back up? After intense digging, my sore muscles were giving me a bit of trouble. And then I need your help getting off the toilet. <laughs> I can't move my muscles. <laughs> What's up? Come on in. Heading out. Good luck. Let me know if you need me. Call me. So Evan just went to scout the mountain biking trail that's around here while well, this ointment that I would just put on my leg sets in a little bit and then maybe I'll go out at sunset. It's only a three mile long point to point trail. We are in Mulehe and right now we are out at the Punto Prieta uh, camping area which is totally free. There's nobody else here with us, which is awesome. That's how we like it. Penelope's been running around by herself. She loves it. Susie, who's back? How was your ride? You oh, look a little sweaty. A little sweaty. sweaty yeah. The well, wind, what the was wind the, the decision ultimately? We're going that way. How much bird head have you been eating? Fish head, fish bones. Finally getting into the flow of Mexico. About to hit the water for the first time. When we were at Costco, we got a body glove paddle board. It's been living in our in our living room ever in since. Our neighborhood. <laughs> in our way. Really in our way, yep. And in Nelly's way, as you can see. So let's get after it. Let's hit the water, babe. Ooh, I've, la, la, you look I've tight. got my sun hat on. Check out Evan's fit. Yeah, um, brand new blue shorts. shorts. His black ones were falling apart because he's had them since probably high school. Big reveal. Oh, oh baby. Sweet, so find the pack back up. <laughs> okay, he came with this nice electric pump. I can't bend over right now because my legs are so sore. <laughs> Thank you. 
Ciao. So she's not with me. I'm going to try standing up. anything. Paradise. We've got shirts hanging, towels hanging. We've really set up uh, camp here. And then Evan decided to go out for a little uh, refresher paddle <laughs> with the dog and his phone. Tell us what happened, Evan. Well, I didn't want to go out with my phone. That, I that, suggested it because, that's the first thing because our body water, glove came with that thing. A waterproof case. She was like, just take your phone. You know, why not? What if you want to take a picture? I took mine with me earlier. Things went well. I took my phone out, I took photos, I put it back in multiple times. Penelope's getting more comfortable on the paddle boards, so she decided to come with me. She was doing great. Uh, she got off the board once. Um, I have to like, to get her back on, I have to like kind of like help push her on the board. And then we were paddling. I don't know, she decided she wanted to jump in again. That time I had to help her back on the board. I looked down in my phone that was supposed to be tied to the uh, paddleboard was now missing. So I yelled for Melanie, I was looking around, I couldn't find it, got Penelope back to shore, started searching. So Melanie was looking close to the shore, she said she saw a few stingrays, got a little nervous. I was looking further off the shore on the paddle boat and I saw a little white thing dangling. And it was the tip of this, the phone was like this on the uh, bottom um, luckily it was shallow water pretty far out I saw it went after it grabbed it waterproof case works phone works it actually may have amplified my signal I got a few emails while I was down there <laughs> the kicker is that he had been on an iPhone 7 since the iPhone 7s came out and he just upgraded to the 11 We're come to Baja time. they said <laughs> you'll love it <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be amazing. The weather's great. Half of that is true. <laughs> For us. <laughs> We're just dumb. Okay, after all of those 
crazy events. Motions are running a little high and we definitely burned some calories. So let's go make what you eat in Mexico, tacos. What we eat everywhere. We do eat a lot of tacos regularly just because tortillas are pretty easy to buy and store. But here in Mexico, we've got fresh tortillas and some vegetarian ingredients. So let's see what Evan can whip us up. So we got leftover potatoes, broccoli. We're gonna throw some zucchini in it, along with some cashew cheese, avocado. Put it all in taco. Melanie, two tacos, Melanie. They said it'll be really warm. <laughs> Freezing. Okay, round two. Mixed it into some nachos. You know, because nachos, you know. It's Mexican being alive. Is it Mexican? Mm -hmm. Is it nachos? and I have settled in for the evening, but Evan is the Energizer Bunny right now. I think he feels like he defeated um, a possible catastrophe after losing his phone and then finding it. So since then, he's been go, go, go. He made us lunch, and then he went out for another paddle with Penelope, and then he went for a quick bike ride, and now he's back on the paddle. He went to the like other side of the bay and came back, so excited because he saw starfish and more stingray and a pool of, or I mean, a, what's it called? A school of fish uh, that were bigger than the ones that we've been seeing. He's out there right now <laughs> again. Um, meanwhile, Penelope and I are kind of done and tired. First full beach day, uh, and we need to build a little bit of endurance for the long days. Melanie says she doesn't see much out here, so I'm trying to show her that there's a bunch of... I think I'll start packing up a couple of the things that we have laid out here today while Evan's out for his little sunset stroll. The reason why I'm so tired is because after digging for like a 24 hours, um, my hamstrings for some reason are tighter than they have ever been. For example, right now when I'm trying to like bend over, I have to do kind of like a, a squat here because I can't come close to even like touching my knees without, with my legs opened wide too. Like it's... <laughs> I've never experienced this before and I don't know what to do about it besides a rest and take it easy. How goes it? How was your sunset stroll? Oh my god. You can see so many fish. Man. They come out at night? No. You can just see through the water better. Hello. So the next day now, day two at this spot. Day two? Day three? I think I've already lost count. At this spot in the water, super calm this morning. Brought my pit vipers polarized so I can see into the water better. I've seen so many little sea creatures. A bunch of stingrays, huge schools of fish. The fish are small, but the schools are huge. I just saw a starfish. That was cool. There's a stingray coming right for me. Oh, he turned. Oh, I just saw a fish truck. Also, this board, we bought it kind of on a whim. I think it's like the best $400 we've spent in a while because otherwise we would have no way to get out on the water. It takes up a lot of room in the van, but 
not as much as you would expect. I just saw a big colorful fish. I would describe it as like a dory, but probably two times the size. I know absolutely nothing about sea life creatures, but we're gonna go try and find dory. There it is. Time to deflate and head to the next place. I don't want to leave this spot, but we've been here for like two or three days. Two and days. two days. <laughs> I was out there talking about that and I was like, I think I lost count already. The next place we're headed to is supposed to be even calmer water, or I guess probably as calm as this, and beautiful sandy beaches. The only thing is like this one, besides these guys that just showed up to like pick up random rocks. Um, this one is perfect. There's nobody here, so. I've really enjoyed it. Not to mention, there's a little tiny bike trail from right here. Tiny. Tiny, tiny. This is definitely going on our probably top five favorite beaches in Baja. That's so <laughs> We've only been to one. Run away. We just called to Playa Santispac and then we're in the Bahia de, Bahia de Concepcion which everybody that comes to Baja raves about and I can see why. We just got here. This is a paid for area so there's a lot more people but there's room to spread out so we found a nice little cove here with only a couple neighbors. Penelope's already in the water. We're airing up first things first because we just saw some kayakers out here paddling with a bunch of dolphins. With a bunch of dolphins. So the dolphins are around and I'm really excited. There's some really nice yachts and sailboats. Oh, and somebody, <laughs> we literally just parked and somebody already came through and tried to sell us some olive oil and honey and wine after I told him that uh, we're vegetarian and we don't eat scallops. <laughs> that's what he was originally trying to sell us. Things are getting a little crazy with the moonshade and the breeze, but Chef Melanie just cooked us up some acai bowls. So hopefully we can eat these in peace without the wind trying to tear everything up. We enjoyed our acai bowl. <laughs> I made it at, let's say like two o'clock. We weren't able to eat it until probably three because we had vendors, we had a guy who's been traveling through Mexico on foot come and talk to us. And then the wind picked up in our, oh my God. And then the dolphins came out. <laughs> and then our uh, shade just picked up and flew away over the van. It was still dangling. So it didn't like completely get away from us, but it did because it was on the other side of the van. So then we had to deal with that, put it away completely, and ate our acai bowls, and now we're just hanging out because I can't have another catastrophe happen in the next hour. <laughs> so Evan just pulled up to shore on somebody else's boat. He went out on the paddleboard. Um, so there's some questions that I need answered. I'm gonna let him tell us. So I went for a nice little evening paddle. I was expecting to see some dolphins. Uh, I followed two guys out. It was evident they were not strong paddlers from the beginning. One guy couldn't stand on his board. Um, so we got out there, got around the island. You started, went all the way around the island? I mean, around the, it's not very far, very close. Uh, and started heading back. And the other guy popped off his board again in the water. Like fell? Yeah. <laughs> and he couldn't get back on his board oh. to like save his life. Like, he just like kept on like trying to oh, get no. on and he couldn't get on. So we were like trying to help him out and this whole time we were just floating farther and farther away. Oh no. I was like, oh God, <laughs> I'm gonna have to go get someone with a boat to help these guys. So I started heading back. It was kind of zigzagging because you couldn't go straight at the, the wind and the water or else you literally just go backwards. So that's how we got in the situation. And then some guy came up, came around, picked those two guys up, 
offered me a ride. I said, oh, I'm good, I can just you know keep paddling. He told me he'd come back and pick me up um, after he drops them off, so I got a few more paddles in. Picks me up, brings me back. He was a nice guy from British Columbia. Says this happens all the time. It's, he's just cruising around, picking up people that are dumb enough to go off in the ocean. These are those vicious waves that try to oh, eat. No, no, these are not. Try to eat paddleboarders. <laughs> The next morning, we ventured out to the calm waters and the mangroves just behind our van for some more paddleboard practice before leaving Bahia de Concepcion and continuing south to the town of Loreto. After a not so quick stop for vegan tacos, we decided to make a last minute effort to catch a late season whale tour in the town of Adolfo Lopez Mateos. The guy who picked up Evan when he was lost at sea highly recommended a tour there. Unfortunately for us, we were just one week too late and the whales were officially headed north for summer. I guess that gives us an excuse to come back again next year. Until then, with last minute plans changed again, we headed on to La Paz. <laughs>